When we think of televisions and radios, we imagine the physical images of the objects themselves. However, when we think of the internet, what exactly do we see? Most of us don't really know what to imagine when we hear the word internet. Should we think about the websites that we surf? Should we imagine the cables and fiber optic systems that provide us with connection? Or should we picture the machines that allow us to access the internet? Maratsov states that the term internet is very vague. On one hand, the IS, or Internet Society, claims that the internet can be whatever we make it, giving us the freedom to shape it. While, on the other hand, Nicholas Carr, a harsh critic of the internet, states that the internet controls us as the net provides a high-speed system for delivering responses and rewards, which encourages the repetition of both physical and mental actions. Just like how Ian Pavlov conditioned dogs to salivate when they hear a bell ringing, we are also encouraged by the internet to continue browsing the internet. We are conditioned by the internet to check what Kim Kardashian did last night, and conditioned to put up a Facebook status about something hilarious. The internet has hypnotized us to waste time and stay on the internet. Will it help you get a job and be successful if you found out who died on Game of Thrones? Probably not. Regardless, most people believe that the internet is revolutionary. Yet we should also keep in mind that people considered the newest technologies of the day, such as automobiles, revolutionary as well. Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, once said, There was a time when people felt the internet was from another world, but now people realize it's a tool that we use in this world. Just like how the automobile and other technologies have lost their novelty, the internet will one day be considered nothing special. Muratsov suggests that we only believe the internet is amazing because it is still a recent invention. The internet changes nothing. As historian Marshall Poe puts it, it's not much of an exaggeration to say that the internet is a post office, newsstand, and video store rolled into one. Let's be honest, that's amazing. But it's amazing in the same way a dishwasher is amazing. It enables you to do something you have always done a little easier than before. The internet is widely considered a revolutionary technology that surpasses everything that has come before it. Scholars and the general public alike describe the internet as a high point in human technological innovation. Muratsov describes this phenomenon by saying that history itself is deemed irrelevant, for the internet is seen as representing a distinct rupture. Under closer scrutiny, rupture talk appears everywhere in our internet discourse. Jonathan Zitrain, a professor of internet law, is one example of a scholar that characterizes the internet using rupture talk. At a 2011 conference on internet governance, Zitrain declared that the internet was a distinctly special technology because in the past, we wouldn't really have a conference here about electricity and the ways in which it could be used for good and evil. Muratsov criticizes Zitrain's statement, arguing that it captures the naivete of internet triumphalism and the utter contempt in which it holds the history of technology. Muratsov counters that the internet is not unique because controversy over technological advancements has occurred throughout history. He counters the trans argument by providing evidence of controversy over the advent of electricity, just as the internet had sparked heated debate. Thus, the internet is no different from previous technologies in its disputed issues. Only by papering over and suppressing such history can we see the internet as unique and exotic. According to Muratsov, for something to be considered revolutionary, the declaration must meet two criteria. First, it needs to be cognizant of what has happened and been said before, so that the trend it's claiming as unique is in fact unique. Second, it ought to master the contemporary landscape in its entirety. It can't just cherry-pick facts to suit its thesis. Following this criteria, Muratsov proves that arguments about the advancement of the internet don't meet the standards for technological revolution. While the internet may not be revolutionary, it still plays an important role in our lives. Muratsov suggests that internet-centric supporters should acknowledge the internet differently. He suggests scholars balance overly zealous rupture talk without downplaying the role of the internet. Rather than focusing on the internet and how it shapes society, we need to study how technology and society shaped each other. With this approach, you will be able to understand the importance of the internet in an informative and intellectual way, without exaggerating the internet as a revolutionary technology.
There is no need to abandon technological solutions altogether. Rather, an alternative, more open-ended design can help achieve similar results while allowing human agents to continue exercising the tough, challenging choices that distinguish them from machines, which act on their own agendas with mindless and emotionless brutality. In addition to listing the negative aspects of technosolutionism, Muratsov proposes the idea of creating technological systems that allow us to become more reflective, caring, and humane creatures. Muratsov's goal is to use technology in a way that helps us become more reflective human beings, as opposed to taking advantage of technology and failing to question the way in which it functions or how it came about. One of the biggest misconceptions of the last few decades was the separation of morality and technology. However, Muratsov says that we can't always assume that all technologies are immoral. He believes that this is the time to create ways that technology can boost or compromise the human condition. Muratsov essentially urges the use of technology to spark debate and politics, which to him are the true ways that we solve problems as humans. In other words, he wants technology to act as conversation starters. Muratsov uses Santa Monica's smart parking system as an example of the separation between morality and technology. This new parking system uses parking meters with sensors that are able to determine when a car leaves a parking spot. After a car leaves the spot, regardless of whether or not there was time remaining in the meter, the meter automatically resets for the next user. Unfortunately, this new system prevents other citizens from benefiting from other drivers' previously paid parking time. Muratsov proposes the creation of a new smart parking system that gives drivers the choice of leaving the time in the meter for another user or the option of resetting the time completely. This option allows drivers to deliberate about which course of action would be the most virtuous. He argues that this will help improve efficiency in our democracy and allow citizens to think critically about the hidden costs of the invisible infrastructure that surrounds them. Muratsov hopes this will lead citizens to approach many other aspects of life with the same critical mindset. Muratsov ultimately concludes that Santa Monica's parking system isn't smart enough because it doesn't give drivers the opportunity to reflect. Therefore, it does not allow technology to improve our human condition. Muratsov emphasizes the utility of technology becoming more like the human condition, specifically by making it more unpredictable, just like humans. Hence, he mentions several inventions, one of which is a smart toaster created by Swedish engineers. This toaster's behavior depends on the electricity consumption around it. This product forces users to make a choice, which once again highlights an important part of Muratsov's argument, creating new technologies that allow for reflection. The goal is to maximize local and economic efficiency while decreasing environmental concerns in the form of conserving electricity and spending more time reflecting on ways to solve these problems. The internet has radically changed everyday life in American society. It has created new ways to connect with friends and family, disrupted the way we do business, and rewired just about everything in between. But the internet and the World Wide Web are still relatively young. The public web is only 25, and, like most 20-somethings, it still has a lot of growing up to do. Although there is a lot of growing up for the internet to do, not many people would like to witness the internet developing into something more powerful. There are already people that complain about the internet as an invasion of privacy. As Morozov mentions, computers are getting smarter and smarter, and more of them are watching us. A major issue with the internet is that it's hard enough to delete something off the internet permanently. The more advanced the internet becomes, the harder it is to delete content from the internet. Because of the presence of this content, the internet has become a powerful tool that can be used to ruin someone's reputation. Many companies are able to benefit from this tool since they have the ability to search potential employees' social media profiles for incriminating content. But who gets to decide what stays on the internet and what does not? Muratsov poses the counter-argument that the internet, like the human brain, should possess a short-term memory, a long-term memory, and the ability to forget certain information. This would be beneficial to the people who want the ability to hide undesirable information about themselves from the internet. There are many positive benefits that can occur as a result of the advancement of the internet. Instead of going to hospitals for checkups, you might be able to monitor yourself. Instead of losing the willpower to resist fast foods, you'd be able to sign up for newsletters promoting healthy choices and conscientiousness. In the future, there will be tools that will be able to help you organize your life easily, balance your diets, and so much more. Although there is controversy about the future of the internet, it has potential to benefit mankind.